to show you how to uh, set up the Bulldog SmartThing starter kit. The starter kit includes the uh, motor assembly, a large and small mounting bracket, the, uh, the pin kit, which is here, uh, three or more leak sensors, the Z-Wave uh, control module, and an AC adapter, and the SmartThings hub. I have plugged in 20 or 30 feet away from here into my router. All right, let's just plug things in first. So this is the AC adapter. I'm just going to plug it into power and plug it into the control module. I'm going to plug in the motor assembly using the PS2 connector. Just be careful to align the uh, pins properly. Now that's in there. There's an option to put on this sensitivity bar, we call it. But in most cases, it's not needed. And I, I think generally I would recommend against it. And, but if you don't use it, you need to adjust these screws so they're just at the right height. You don't want them, e you want them even and just below the flat surface. So I've done that already here. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to pair the leak sensors and the, the leak sensor Zigbee and pair the Z-Wave uh, Bulldog control module. And then I'm gonna show you how to add the automation to shut off the water in the case of a leak. All right, I forgot to mention, you do need to set the, um, the SmartThings app up on your phone. You need a Samsung account for that. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to take this off. Some people don't see this, but there is a little protective covering over that. You can take that off. All right, let's um, first pair the uh, Bulldog Z-Wave device. Um, I like to for Z-Wave devices because uh, sometimes there's a little bit of corruption sometimes when you're pairing it or maybe it was previously paired. I like to first exclude it and I'm just going to go through that process here. So you can see that this has been paired because that light is solid. It, it would be flashing slowly if it wasn't paired to a Z-Wave system. So I'm going to go through the exclusion process. Top right, select the Z-Wave Utilities. Z-Wave exclusion. So now it's trying to exclude it and it's waiting for me to put this in exclusion mode, which is the same as pairing mode. So I'm just going to click this button as fast as I can three or more times. And you should see a success. One device, device, deleted one device. So now you can see this is flashing, which indicates that it's not paired to a Z-Wave system. All right, so let's just back out of this menu and we'll go and we'll add a device. So plus at the top right, add device. And I can do it by brand. So we could look for the Econet brand by brand. Sorry, put it in alphabetic order. So I'm gonna look for E. There's that brand there. So I'm not gonna, the valve, but I'm not gonna bother it because it's just as easy to do it with scanning. So I usually generally just use a generic scan. So I'm gonna add device. I'm going to scan for nearby devices. All right, so now it's looking for a new device. Again, click it three or four times as quickly as you can. That's what I'm gonna do here. So now it's looking and I should see a successful pairing process here in a minute. So that stopped blinking already, which means it has been paired, but the cloud service is just catching up to it here. There it is, the Econet valve. I'm just gonna rename it Econet valve. Then you just back out of these menus. Devices. There it is there. All right, so I should be able to, oh, it says it's open. I should be able to open and close the valve. All right, so now you can open and close the valve with your phone. And I'm just going to close it again. All right, now let's go through the uh, pairing process for the uh, leak sensors, and then we'll add automation, and we'll test them.
You need to open these things up to get to the batteries and to the pairing button. So let's just do that quickly. I'll likely fast forward this process so you don't have to get bored. All right, you open it up to add the batteries and to expose the pairing button. The uh, AAA batteries are included, so let's just install them. It's blinking blue, I'm not sure if you can see that. That looks like it's in pairing mode. So let's pull out the phone. You can also use the button here to put it in pairing mode. Okay, add device. I'm just going to scan for new by, nearby devices. And I think I'll just push this button anyway, put it in pairing mode. Oh, it's blinking fast. All right, so it found the uh, found the leak sensor. I'm just going to rename it, and I'm just going to back out. Let's find the device. There it is. There, leak laundry. All right, so I put the screws back in and I've sent them so they're almost touching the floor but not touching the floor. And I've got the leak sensor up here. So there's a, I put a little bit of water here. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Uh, but just imagine the water's moving and not the leak sensor. You, uh, the water's moving, you get a leak. It provides an audio alert and you get a notification. Laundry leak one. So there you go, that's the first part, but now let's set automation so when we get that leak, it shuts off the water. I'm going to show you now. So now I'm going to set automation when a leak sensor gets wet to shut off the water. So you get a notification and the water will be shut off. So let's do that right now. So I'm just going to go uh, automations at the bottom right here. I want to add a new automation, so not a scene, but create a routine. So what's going to be the trigger? I'm going to use the leak sensor as a, so the status of a device. And I'm just going to look for laundry leak, which is in alphabetical order here, it looks like. There's leak laundry, leak laundry one. So the water sensor, and when it's wet, I want it, so that part is done. And then what I want to happen is control devices. And I want to test 22. Next, I want to close the valve, done, save, let's just call it leak, that's the name of the automation or the routine. All right, and get that leak sensor wet and see what happens. Okay, so imagine again, there's some water here. Imagine again, the water is moving and not the leak sensor, so it comes into contact. Gives me an alert. So I got a notification that the moisture was detected and that it shut off the water. That's it.